Good morning, everybody. Hi, Connor. How are you? Hey, you doing, Carol? All good. How are you? I'm not too bad. It's a sunny day in the dark, you know. Um, so, um, hi, Tan Tani's in the background, keeping everything going. And I think people are just coming online. They're all joining there. I can see in the corner. So mm -hmm. we'll give everybody just another second. This is just coming over 10 o'clock. Uh, so welcome, everybody, to our Data Builders um, SciSense 22 highlights. Uh, so it's a little summary of some of the key features that came out of SciSense last year that really caught our attention. So Connor and I will go through that now in a second. Um, and uh, it's hard to believe it's the 18th of April. Oh, it's so flown the, in, hasn't it? The months are, the months are flying, yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, well, well, we'll give it just two more seconds. A couple more people join in there. We'll give everybody a second just to get online and then we'll get going. All right, okay, all right. Everybody's in now. Yeah. All right. Okay. We'll 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 start off. So good morning, everybody. Uh, as I said, I'm Kieran Kirk. I'm the operations director, and with me this morning is Connor. Hey, Connor. How you doing? Yeah, Connor's our business development executive with Data Builders. So um, yeah, we're de delighted to have you all here this morning. We're really going to go through some of the SciSense highlights of the last year's releases and some of the key features, and give you a quick demo of some of the new functionality that uh, happened it wasn't in some of our previous webinars and demos. So, Connor, I'll hand over to you, and you can yeah. you can introduce and bring us from. from yeah, absolutely. Here. I'll just I'll just take us through a brief little agenda there. So, um, firstly, I want to uh, take a bit of time to explain who we are. I think it's it's obviously important. Uh, a lot of new faces here um, today. So, give a little background as to who we are. Um, given that it's uh, a slice sense webinar over the past year, we'll we'll um, highlight some of the other recent updates um, in the business. Um, of course, I'm going to hang, hand, hand over to you for those SciSense bits. Um, I know you have a few nice uh, slick demonstrations lined up as well. Um, and please, as well, any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. And myself, Tanya, um, will answer them as we go along, or um, we can grab Kieran, quick Kieran's attention um, when needs be. Um, can move on there so very briefly who are we um i won't read all this so we are everything data intelligence and um, it's in our dna um where you're where you're local experts for data intelligence um, and won't, i won't read all this but through our strategic partnerships with um industry leading gartner recognized bi um in, in, in intelligence tools fme snowflake and SciSense, um we've created a complete 360 degree data solution with the ability to scale with you as you grow. Um, very long winded to say is we help you build data pipelines, we help you build your analytics no matter where you might be on your journey. Um, we've pulled this together into our data intelligence platform, um, as you can see here. Um, FME being your data integration, ELT, push, pull, read, write um, tool. Um, Snowflake, your cloud data storage, and BI, our SciSense, which we're all here for, is your BI visualization tool. Um, as I said, yeah, we're all here for the um, for the release highlights from SciSense for the past year, um, and I think it's important to obviously reflect um, on where we've, you know, where we've been. We all lead lead very busy lives. Um, and it's it's important to to just stop and reflect sometimes and see how far you've come um with that being said i'm not sure if you noticed the the slight little change between the two slides there um um so uh, F, sorry fme have actually recently just rebranded so traditionally they were um kind of focused for the past 20 25 years 30 years even were um focused in a kind of gis um integration um niche the past five years have started to make the change more towards big data um and away from uh, geospatial uh not away from geospatial but um you know uh, more focus on the big data side of things um and we've started to see that as well um a lot more of our conversations are involved in FME um, 
as that integration piece and it works so well in conjunction with SciSense. Um, so it's important to highlight and we're, we're actually, we're, we're really excited about this new rebrand um, and everything moving forward. So with that being said, I just wanted to briefly highlight it. If Karen could flick back and forward again, we'll see it. Um, oh, yeah. So yes, yeah, so and there's the old logo there's with the, old the yellow logo. and green and orange. And then we have our new, the new FME new safe fresh logo. FME safe logo. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll hand back over to Kieran now to take you through all the, the SciSense bits. And yeah, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Connor. Um, so yeah, this morning I just want to first off just uh, recap, you know, as Connor says, we've been a lot of change in, in analytics over the years and we've seen the evolution of analytics. So the first generation of analytics was kind of on-prem servers you know static data was sent to you and conventional reports which were leaving gaps between insight and action because it took so long to get the reports that you couldn't actually take a meaningful action and um, the next thing was the um, ability then to have the next generation dashboards that were part of desktop so you're able to find data in the dashboard but the amount of time users spent using the Find, predefined dashboards was declining because they just weren't really finding the answers that they wanted. So now with the third generation cloud-based analytics, it can enable us to deliver data where you are and how you need to use it. And as McKinsey says, it's essential to integrate insights into your daily workflow. So again, this is me moving away from having a standalone dashboard to having analytics integrated into whatever you're doing, whether that is through an app, whether that's you know true, whatever GUI you're using, that the analytic comes to you, not that you have to go to the analytic. And that means you can make faster insights and make better decisions. So uh, what we've seen as the roadblocks of some of the analytic success is we've seen that there's been a huge data explosion. So by 2025, worldwide data will grow 61% to 175 zettabytes. Now I remember when we were talking about make gigabytes and terabytes and then petabytes. Now we're into zettabytes. So this growth of data, and even to see it grow by 61% at this stage, just shows you the data explosion and how do we actually take advantage of this massive data to actually make, turn it from data into information into insight. There's also a big skill set gap. In this last year, we've already seen a 10% we will only use augmented analytics to its full potential. And Gartner have also seen that there's a huge lack of adoption in analytics. On average, analytics are leveraged by only 30% of an organization. And we even see it in, like in a small company like IM, in IMGS and Data Builders, how little we actually use data build analytics ourselves. And it's something we've been changing internally to drink our own Kool-Aid and use analytics faster and have insights quicker and not using reports just kind of after the fact. So the problem today is analytics today are out of context and out of touch. So a lot of people have printed reports, standard on dashboards or email screenshots. Again, static, slow, out of sync. But as humans today, we look at context. You know, everything is used in context. You see your email, your social media, everything is integrated together. It's personalized. When you go onto your Netflix account, it knows who you are. If you go into your Facebook, it shows you ads based on who you are and who you should be. That's not necessarily that good, but it does do it. And it also takes into account location, where you are and what you're doing. So that means that the analytics should reflect that. They should be in context, they should be personalized, and they should be able to be actioned wherever you are. And that's why we're seeing the, uh, the lack of it, uh, uh, analytics adoption. But with the SciSense way, we can automate intelligent in-context app uh, based on what people do in their native apps. So whatever app you work in, we can provide the analytic insight. We can provide personalized data stories in these apps and workflows for data-driven outcomes. So a big part of SciSense is its ability to do role-level security so that when you log into the dashboard, you see the data you only govern to see and it's customized to what you need to see. So you're not having to drill down or filter out to get to see your information as part of your department. It, all, it comes in automatically. And with uh, SciSense, we can deeply embed analytics in apps where people spe already spend their time. And we'll show you a bit of that today. Oops, sorry. So SciSense Fusion, just to introduce it. So with SciSense Fusion, we can connect to any data. So whether that's spreadsheets and files, web applications, high performance databases like Snowflake, Redshift, or relational databases like SQL Server, PostgreSQL, Oracle, or MySQL. We can then build your customized data experiences. So we've two ways. 
to connect that data, we have the elastic cache, which where you can take the data from these formats and store them inside Sysense in its own data warehouse. Or more and more, our customers now with big data are moving to live query. So they are directly querying these high performance databases, the cloud data warehouses, uh, the relation database direct, and not having to use the elastic or the elastic cache. With that, then we can build both code-free analytics. So again, today I'm, I'm, I'm mainly focusing on that, on, on how we can build analytics without coding. But also we have the notebook integration for code-first analytics, where you can write your SQL, your Python, or your R, and develop some really cool uh, integrations there. And then we can infuse analytics everywhere. So whether that's in cloud apps, communication platforms, business apps, or in your workflows, we can bring the analytic to it. So with uh, SciSense, we can connect the data from anywhere. So Flexible Data Engine allows us to integrate live data and ElastiCube in one engine. We have self-service data modeling, connected to data, them, any data, model it and service it in, in any way with no code. And then we also provide the code-driven transformations through the notebook. We can build these customized experiences with code-free analytics, so you can easily use drag and drop. And we have the code-driven, again, with a notebook with SQL or in Python. But then we, we want to be able to infuse intelligence everywhere. So we want actionable intelligence. So go beyond rigid dashboards with intelligence that does more. Again, if you want to see a bit more on that, there is a webinar on our website where Connor and I talked about blocks and, and being able to take action in dashboards. And that was a webinar we did last year and it's up on the Data Builders website. Uh, we can embed anywhere. Very easy to embed a dashboard, to take an iframe and embed it into a, a website. And a size sense is so easy to customize. So you can go in and change anything you want, edit scripts and make it work how you want it to work. Also with size sense, we can unlock your powerful insights. So we have data exploration and insights for every skill set. So with cloud data warehouses, you have the ability to do automatic data preparation. We have the recommendations inside the dashboards so that people can then drill into data and get answers and see the information about what they're looking at. Um, we also have the natural language query, which is one of the features that came out towards the end of 2021, which is called in and simply ask, which allows you just to ask a question and it'll generate a dashboard for you. So again, a lot of the customers we talk to now are looking for self-serve. They want to be able to self-serve the dashboards. They want to be able to use them themselves. So the simply ask is really clever because it allows you to without having a predefined dashboard, go in and go, if you're a CEO, if you're a general manager, if you're a senior guy, you just want to ask a question again, and answer. So you don't have to be following these predefined dashboards. And that is the, the definition of self-service. And we also have advanced analytics and, uh, that we can do forecasting, predictions, and narratives. So we can actually explain what you're seeing on the screen in text. And I'll show you that this morning. And also explanations where you can actually look for anomalies and then look for an explanation as to why that anomaly as a cord in your data. And again, I'll, I'll touch on a bit of that this morning. Um, SciSense is native cloud and cross cloud. So you can host it in your own cloud. You can We can put it up in the SciSense cloud. It can run on premise. It is supports both Linux and Kubernetes and Windows. And it now, and, and a lot more functionality is coming from a multi-tenant approach. So again, having that single, if you're selling or monetizing data and giving analytics to multiple customers, you need a multi-tenant approach where you can split data securely so that each customer can only see their own data. So with SciSense, that multi-tenant architecture is now there. One uh, health warning on the Windows, if someone is looking at Windows, some of the newer functionality, some of the newer forecasting uh, tools, they're really only Linux based. So um, as I sense, definitely a lot of the new capabilities are taking advantage of some of the Linux engine. So we do kind of recommend now mainly going towards Linux, but Windows will work, but it comes with that health warning. And as we said, Excitesense is extendable via APIs, 450 plus APIs, an extensive set of software development kits you can embed, customize, integrate, really easy to, to do. And it just provides an enterprise grid analytics, end-to-end -end governance, the bit, as I said, multi-level security so and governance, so you make sure the right users are using the right system. Cloud scale, so we can use modern microservices for better scale and, and uh, resilience. Flexible deploy deployment options and it's platform agnostic. So just to come on to some of the highlights that I'm going to show this morning. Uh, the first one is the improved filter editor. 
So this really, uh, previously anyone who used filters with Sisense on the older versions would have seen, um, you have your, you know, a list and you pick the list and that's the filter, or you click the tech boxes of which ones you want in your filter. Now with the new filter editor, you can have a lot more options to use um, depending on the data type. So if it's text, you can look for a string inside the filter. You can look for certain, a beginning with a certain letter, ending with a certain letter, whatever it is you want to use, and it'll help you build these filters up better. You've also got then more parameters is not between all these different rules that you can easily build. Again, the idea here is not coding. It's not having someone write in SQL to give you that ability to filter the data more easy. You can do it through the GUI. So this is really nifty. And again, with dates, it's got very clever. So you can go pick a quarter quickly, last quarter, last three quarters, whatever it is you're looking for, it, you can use it. And numeric data, you can do that as well. So depending on the data type, you have a lot more options now with the filter editor. Really nice uh, tool and makes things a lot easier. Again, with customization and self-service, you want to be able to be to change the look and feel of your widgets. So you might want a widget to stand out, or you might have a blocks control, but you want to change some of the outlining coloring and how it sits in your dashboard. Now with the no code widget editor, you can actually go in and change a lot of the coloring and styling of your widgets without having to do custom scripts. So previously that would have had to be done using uh, code. But now with SciSense, you can actually do this in, in a no code option. Again, very uh, for those who maybe are new to SciSense and on the call, you might say, yeah, sure, you should have been all there all along. Okay, fair enough. But it really makes it very easy to use and it's cut, cutting down on some of the scripting that you might have had to do before. Um, this to me now in the last year is one of the key highlights, the report manager. So being a, like in the, earlier in my presentation, I was saying, yeah, get away from these static reports and sending emails and PDFs. Unfortunately, people want that. Organizations want that. Not every user wants to go into the dashboard. If you're the CEO of a Fortune 500 company, you're not jumping into license. You know, you, you want a report sent to you with an answer, and that's it. So with the report manager now, you can actually schedule reports to be sent out on a schedule, either event-based or time-based, and be able to choose who gets that report. So whether it's CSV, uh, uh, people in your group, people, you know, email chains or whatever you want. And also you have the choice of how you want the report delivered, whether it's a PDF, CSV, Excel, or even just a link to the dashboard. So that could just be an email to our CEO at the end of the day to say, look, at this is the sales for the day. Or if it's a help desk manager, this is the help desk reports, open cases, whatever it is you're looking at you can then customize these emails and schedule them to run. Um, and by including the ability to link back into the dashboard, hopefully that'll drive adoption because then users will get the email and they'll go, ah, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on that and I'm going to jump into the dashboard and see what's going on. So it drives that adoption piece. It drives the, 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 the integration. Also for users who may not have licenses, you can then send emails with the PDF or whatever and this is a cost effective way to get the dashboard out. And again, it justifies the value, justifies the investment in the dashboard. So I, I, I'll show you that now in a second. And I've shown this a few times on different webinars. I think I always jump into it because I really like it, um, is the Infusion apps. So again, how do we drive that adoption? How do we get people using the analytic where they need to use it? Well, again, by being able to, with SciSense, push the data or pull the data into Slack or Teams or Excel or Google Sheets or Salesforce. Again, you're bringing the data where to where the users want it. I think that's been a really cool innovation. Uh, Sysense have also, which is very clever, they've created a new user, a user type called Fusion users or Infusion users. So these are a low, very cheap user license so that then they don't have to have a full uh, viewer license so they can actually get into the Infusion apps in a, in a cheap way. So again, if you're like, the C-suite of C-level of an organization. Actually, you just want a little, you know, a question in your in your teams or whatever to say, uh, here's my, um, here is my uh, revenue for the day. Here is the number of cases open. Whatever the query is that you can just get that in that in Excel or in Slack or in Teams. So you don't have to jump into the dashboard. Now, again, we can always have it that it then encourages the user to jump to the dashboard but at least we're bringing the analytic to where they can use it and they can make a decision straight away. 
so okay so i'm going to show you some of this now um so let me just bring up this for a second uh okay so let me jump out here and i go to my where are these here right so i'm going to go into my analytics i have my little demo site up here and i'm going to jump into uh my marketing page this is a sample marketing you'll find this actually if you are um using your size sense if you, this is always up on the i think it's on the demos on the sites it's included anyway so the first thing i want to show you is the advanced filters now so we can see this is a nice dashboard and um, it has some funky widgets some blocks controls in here we can see our trends are shown so you can see straight away when we look under the page here we can see the narrative has been generated so we have the narrative here so it's given us text explaining what's going on in this control here and um, so we can see the information we can see our different widgets and dashboards but on the right here i have my filters so i'm going to look at first off is it the text filter here so with the new edit filter button i can see that i straight away have a lot more functionality now in my drop list so i have a find and list thing so i can actually come in here and go fit and it filters down straight away so previously with users you'd be clicking the button clicking the different filters trying to find them so that's that's straight away some kind of uh, change the other piece we also have is we have now a range of new parameters that we can use to filter and to build our filters so we have is empty is not empty top bottom whatever row we want to use so if i use top it then lets me go straight away and go okay top 10 top 100 whatever it is i'm looking for the first one i want to look at is if i just want to go in here and actually say uh find uh oh, no, sorry not the top i'm going to use uh do, do, do. where is it gone starts with sorry that's the one i don't know what begins so it starts with so if i actually go out here and i go m it then shows me mi10 mi10 pro and I might have, but I'm just going to leave it at that and apply. And now my widget has is now showing starts with M. My dashboard has now updated, so you can see the numbers have dropped. My text down here has now drill changed again because the narrative picks up from the filter. So if I turn off that filter just for a second, you can see dashboard reruns and the narrative reruns and it now goes 71 weeks not 41 weeks put the widget back on the filter back on sorry and it flicks down and it goes into 41 weeks so straight away we we very easily just said i don't have to be typing in lots of buttons i can actually look at my information the other thing that did come out is the 2022 release 2021 was the analyze it talked about it earlier on so it's the ability to do that self-service piece so i can click on that button and I can go in and I can do an explanation. So I can look at the 2020 campaign and look at the information and it brings up that, that chart in the, in the area I clicked on. Now, if I click on this little point here, it's now gonna give me an explanation as to why that was. And it's possible explanation was EU. So most of our sales or most of our, our marketing was coming from the EU. So the reason we had the peak in 09 was we had a peak from of interest from the EU. So that easy piece of being able to not having to create another dashboard or you know, manually, being able to run the explanation, be able to drill in from the advanced filter is really good. And then you've also got the download button here. So if I want to, I can download that image and save it as a PNG and then I have it and put into a dashboard again, contradicting myself when it comes to um static imagery and things but we still have users who just want to be able to do these kind of things so that's why it's there so if i and you can see the different statistics are brought up on the explanations so you can see where the platform type is that i can drill in i can cross reference i can look at the information so that explanation is really good so i'll go back into my advanced filter here so now i can actually change that and instead of using m i can add another condition if i want to or I can just go and say, no, I'm going to use contains. 
So this time I'm going to use contains and I'm going to say, let me see something in here that I like. And I'll say, yeah, I'll say 10. So contains 10. And again, straight away, it gives me the prompts to show me what's that actually answering that query. So there's three entries here. So I can hit that, hit apply. And now it's refiltered and it's saying product containing 10. Okay, so really, really easily, I've been able to filter to create that filter and actually move on. And again, if I just if I want to, you can add another condition. So I could say and contains, let's say uh, MI, and now I've only got MI10 and MI10 Pro. So you know, without have like if that was doing it with code, you'd be writing SQL, you know, string comparisons to actually get that information. So easy now just to drill into the data. So easy to be that self service piece that you give someone a high level dashboard, but if they need to filter down to see what they want to see, that they can actually do that themselves without having to do too much. Now I can get rid of the um, the contains and I can switch that to then, you know, the usual kind of thing top, ranked, and then pick a field and then uh, top 10, you can pick your fields or whatever. And there's no, there's no data in that one, but you can pick your field. So similarly, then if I go down, we can see. If I go to the age category here, so you can see the list is is popped up straight away. It's kind of a number one, so I can pick an age range and hit apply on that, and it now drills in again and drills down through the data. So I can go up and, and close that. If you don't like a widget, a filter, you can turn it off by hitting the button, and you can stop that filter from happening. So, and then the other one I want to show you quickly is down here is is dates because date is always a, a good one. For people who are looking at, at information so you can pick a type of date when it's a date widget so i can actually go in now and go okay month and pick a, a specific month from my date so i could pick 0420 and apply that and now it's drilling down and giving me that information or i can actually come in here and i can go last and pick a range of dates or i can pick a date range and pick earliest date which was first of february uh so i can pick that and then i can make a date and then yeah and then that's what i i pick you know and you can apply a range and pick your dates so really easy then with the dates now and the date control again something that some people are always looking for or you can use again a range of other parameters is within is within is or is not again it's sometimes always useful for for a widget to be able to filter out what you don't want to see. And you can then pick that, say it's not a certain date. And also we can uh, apply or cancel or favorite any rules we want. I actually just want to show you one thing before I move on as well. I'll go back to my product one, bring it back up. Um, you can also, <clears throat> we can, uh, if I scroll down, where's it gone? Uh, you, yeah, it's not in that one, but I'm using this one here, yeah. the. Uh, Yeah, uh, it's not showing. Oh yeah, uh, we, we can actually create custom filters as well to use the Jackal as well, which is just not shown there at the second. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is, is just to create a new dashboard. So I'm going to go to my data and I'm going to pick my uh, last cube and I'm going to use my e-commerce, which is this one. And I have, little, I have a little database here with some data in it. And I'm going to add a new dashboard just to show you how I can create a dashboard, which is fine. So create a simple dashboard. And if you have any questions, please throw them into the chat or uh, um, there's a question tab there and feel free to ask. So I'm going to call that uh, SciSense 22. Create. So I've now got my little dashboard and I want to create some data. So I'm going to create a uh, revenue. And what I'm going to show you now is how we can actually customize the look and feel of a dashboard. So I got my pivot. I want to add, uh, sorry, it's the secondary is that, and I want to add uh, the country. So do 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 country. So I'll switch that to pivot. Sorry, and country. And I've got my value and my total revenue. And there's somebody's birthday. Um, so uh, we've got a value and the revenue. So straight away, I can do my little things that I was doing before. So I'm going to change this. 
I want to custom. Oh, sorry, there's the custom. I knew it was somewhere. There's the custom where you can actually write in your own code if you want to add in some little, a little bit more. You can write in your own little JSON to actually filter out the records based on that as well. But in this case, I'm going to use, uh, I just want the top. So I want top and I want a uh, revenue. Okay. So I got my top 10 by revenue, apply that. Uh, I want to uh, sort by the revenue. So I'll sort ascending. Oh, sorry, sort of descending. There we run. And you can see now I've got my little revenue. I got my little chart. Looks pretty cool. Okay. So I'm actually going to turn that into a pie chart. And we can see our countries and we can see our pie chart. Now, if we go to the right hand side here, we can actually see that we have widget style. So we have our widget style, so we're able to change the colors. So I'm able to um, move, change the space around to large. So I can put that to large. The corner radius, I'm going to make it large because I want to make all these things easy to see. I'm going to put a border on it and I'm going to give it a nice green color. Okay. Yeah, over there. Yeah, done. And I'm going to give it a background red. Just these will be very garish, but yeah, just to show you. And a title text, I'm going to make yellow. And alignment divider line, actually, why not? And a background color, I'll leave for now. Okay, so I've now applied that. So I've now created my funky widget. I can give it a, a name here. So it's now a funky widget and you can see the color so you can see how easy it is with the new style editor to really create your own little widgets and things now i'm going to create another table while i'm here uh, so that's just the new style editor but what i also want to be able to do was add some other data so i'm going to take this time i'm going to do quantity i'm going to advance config so i'm going to do that there and i'm going to add some add the countries again so every country gone yeah and uh, switch that to a bar chart this time. So uh, values should be categories, should be country. Again, I'm going to filter out and only have my top. So top uh, ranked by uh, quantity this time. So it's top quantities, countries. And I'm going to sort uh, ascending again so you can see them. Okay, so there's my top countries. And everything. So again, in the widget, in the design here, what I actually can do is I can also decide to add a narrative. And this is where I think it gets very nice. So I'm going to add my narrative. And I've now got my little text above here. So with the narrative, so we got the style editor, but also with the narrative, I can decide to put it below the widget, above the widget, or on its own. Only narration. So if I'm going to put it above and I'm going to put it as bullets and country and you can change things like plural. If I want to change the text and say, well, country, plural is countries, not country. OK, so I can actually change it in the side of the dashboard. Sentiment up is good, down is good, whatever you want to say. Uh, aggregation, sum, all these kind of things. So you can actually create this text really quickly, really easily. And again, remember, so I've now put that on my dashboard. So I got my little widget and I've got my dash, I've got my text coming up here. So really quickly, I got the funky widget, I got my decks and I got my dashboard and the narrative. If I click on the United States, you'll see the total amount, it then filters down to only 86,000 for the United States. So if I reset that widget, so how quickly I can then create the um, widget, the narrative, to show more text to show all the information actually what i might do is change that one to do it side by side because it's not really showing up nicely there so if i go back in here and put it uh this and i'll put the full verbosity onto it and i'll put it below the widget okay apply so we now have our text and uh yeah we show it it's going to be all there okay all right so that's I've created my narratives, I've put the widget on the dashboard, I've shown it how, how it actually can actually work. So the next thing I want to be able to do is to be able to go in and use the report manager to actually send this out. So I want to use report manager. So I go into my report manager and I can create a new report. So add new report, 
I'll call it uh, say sense web one, right? Take the dashboard. So my dashboard was what did I call that? No, oh, that wasn't it. Uh, dashboard today was come on. That's down here. Yeah. Size since 22. That's it. So I now have my dashboard. Down here, I can now select what formats I want. So I want the dashboard link and I want the PDF in this case because I want my text. I want the recipients to be myself, Kim Kirk, and I want the scheduler to be every day starting today at that time. So I create report and now that size sense web one is now created. So it's able to be sent out and just to test it, I can actually come over here and I can go send report. So I click the send report button and uh, I should now I just need to open up my Outlook because it'll take a second. I'm just spin that across there. Uh, where'd it go? It's coming. Oh, oh sorry, I'm not there. Didn't quite come in, let's see now. There we go. All right. So now um, in my emails, I have a new email called SciSense Admin. So the email was sent there at 1036. Click on the PDF. And we've got my email, my dashboard has been sent and my widget. So it's taken the data out and sent it out as that email. And I can click on the link and it'll bring me back to the dashboard. So very quickly being able to use the report manager to send out the data, send out the link. Um, it didn't take the innovators for some reason, I need to check that, but um, it, it takes the information and takes out my funky widget with the colors and the schemes. So everything is then sent out and then you're able to use it. So that, the final thing I want to show you, and yeah, we're starting to run a bit tight in time, is I'm going to create another little dashboard. So I go to my, e-commerce and I'm going to create a, a dash brand new dashboard and it is going to be titled uh say sense fusion okay so create that and I've now created my size and fusion I'm going to select some data so I am going to have a uh, Quantity again, some of the quantity, uh, advanced config, switch that to a table. Um, I'm going to add some columns. So it's going to be the country itself. Okay, add, add a country, ID. yeah, country itself, and then add country ID as a unique field, bring that across there. And yeah, quantity. And I'm going to add another, which is revenue. So we have our revenue, we have our country, we have our IDs, and we have all the information and pages and pages and pages of data. Okay, so I can apply that. And then if I go back in and configure it, I can go over here and go publish as view. So I can create that as a view. So I'm going to call it. Sisense, uh, Sisense Web 1, just for the guests of the day, because I have it in my copy and paste, and I hit publish. So that view is now created. So I've created now an infusion view. So in here, I can go, let me just drag that up there. Uh, country ID, cool. Come on. Yeah. Uh, so the country ID, I can set it as the unique identifier. Um, the quantity, I can infuse view options. I can use an aggregation and say, do sum of quantity and for country, sorry, for revenue, I can also do uh, aggregation sum. Okay. And country ID, I can say infused options don't show it in the view. Okay. So I've applied that. So I've now created my, I've taken the data, I've created a shared view and I set it up so that it can be actually published out. So what I want to be able to do first off is I'm going to fire up my teams and hopefully not a heap of messages is coming in from the team, but I want to show you uh, where we are in teams. And let me just get that right first. So go inside the license. 
There we go. Look at that. I knew that was going to happen. Yeah. So I go into my Teams and I'm now in my chat here. So I can come down here and I can go Views. So I click on Views, hit the button. And what we say is we see now the different views that I have set up on my system. And the one I set up today, SciSense Web, is already shown there. So I can now click on it. It's SciSense Web 1. And we can see the data is actually there. So we're now getting that information back. And I can go Analyze Data. And it tells me the sum. There are 199 records. The sum of quantity is 91,000. The sum of revenue is 39 million. And then I can pick a dimension. So I'll pick country as a dimension. And I pick a cut measure, which is sum of quantity. And I can go country and sum of quantity. And it shows me United States, United Kingdom, Germany, Australia. So again, when we're talking about that self service capability, if you're CEO of the company and he just wants to know the answer, he can just go in, type in the value, and get his answer for the day. If he wants to, okay, so he knows that's the quantity. Actually, I want to want to know how much money we we brought in by country. He again can run that and he gets his his answers. So again, doesn't have to jump into the dashboard. Doesn't have to have a full seat of sense. He can actually use the system in this way. If I also then go to um, Excel, if I have it. So if I go into Excel and uh, fire it up, I can go in and click on my little button here, Science and Analytics, and it remembers me because I logged in this morning. And again, I can see my view is now there, Science and Web. I can go Add to Worksheet, and it's bringing the data down. So I'm now able to bring that information down and see it in my Science and in my Analytic. And you can bookmark anything that you want to see. So if you save things, you can also use the Ask Me. So you can just type something in. So I could type in SciSense Web 1 without having to brush through it, and it'll preview it and show me the information. So and again, the natural language query stuff that I was showing you in the Simply Ask, being able to write, you know, use the NLQ. So if I go back out to my uh, dashboard for a second here, if I go back to my Marketing um, dashboard or, or any of the dashboards really. The um, I can actually yeah, sorry just go into it. So if I look at my dashboard, my marketing that same uh, that same natural language query tools is there as well. So you can use the simply ask to create dashboards. That one oh stopping a bit taking its time, but you can use the simply ask to oh yeah, could all the Take all the dashboards off. You can then go in here. Oh, it's not showing that dashboard. But yeah, you can use simply ask to run the NLQ and do any kind of queries you want to use. Okay, so that's me showing the the kind of four top highlights from last year that we wanted to see. Naturally, there's been a lot of other changes um, with SciSense. A lot of improvements have been done in the back end around the administration, making the administration of the system easier to use and easier to manage. So that's been a a, a big improvement. Um, also, a few other things that, that, that are there for organizations, uh, just to call out. One is now the gate integration. So being able to um, uh, store the versions of your dashboards in your Git repository and being able to have a you know branch and save all that functionality there so you can actually have proper developer, developer operations and how you manage your, your versions of your dashboards are now there. Um, one other one for those organizations who are on Elasticube, but maybe are planning to go to Snowflake, you now have what's called the build a destination, which will allow you to take the data model from your, your Elasticube and build it automatically, load it up using an S3 kind of interim bucket into your Snowflake and maintain that data model and maintain all the relationships. So that saves you a big ETL project by being able to very quickly move your, your, your Elasticube infrastructure to the cloud into something like Snowflake. Um, another thing that a lot of one of our customers has taken here in Ireland, which is, is, is really useful, is the web access token capability. So if you're embedding your size and dashboards and you don't want people to have to log in, maybe they're logging into your own application, or maybe you're providing uh, 
dashboards to users who aren't logging in, maybe they're public users, guest users, who you just want to be able to provide simple data to. With the web access token, you can set that up so they don't have to log in. And also the web access token is linked back to a user account. So with that account, then in a user role, they only get access to the data that you set up for that token. So it doesn't mean just by giving someone the web access token access that they get full rights to your system. You can still control access. You're just then not having them to log in, log out, which is really useful some of our customers. Um, so as you've seen today, with, and we're just coming up to uh, time to finish, uh, with SciSense, um, we, the value goes beyond analytics. So you can get data your way. So access to analytics, no matter what the complexity, complexity. We can differentiate your project by making an analytics your competitive advantage, and we can improve speed to action and improve engagement. Uh, we have some further webinars coming up. Um, 16th of May, we have our building data pipelines. Um, so uh, with FME, so I'll be showing you how the big data pipelines, um, I should say big data pipelines, um, building big data pipelines, so bringing data into Snowflake and into Redshift and these kind of data sources with FME and then be able to visualize them in something like it's like SciSense. And, oh, sorry. Oh, I see that. That's yeah. Okay. Um, it's that's the big data integration on the on the twenty fourth of May. The sixteenth of May is the accelerators. So, uh, oops, do that. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's on that. But actually, what we are doing as well is we're running the data builders accelerators. So, if you are new, a few people on the call, maybe a little bit new or coming new to SciSense and FME, we are running two free training, ninety minutes, what we call accelerator workshops where we will have a cloud system set up. You, all you have to do is just come online, join, um, register to the, to, the, to the trading. You will be then given a cloud link. You'll get a, a stand-up environment that you can, using a Strigo platform we use, you can connect, have full access to SciSense. You will have the pleasure of my company for 90 minutes where I'll take you through how in the FME system, how to build automated pipelines and uh, flows and, um, with the uh, Fusion one, again, very similar to what I did today, starting from a data warehouse and building out um, A, elastic cubes, and then B, connecting to live data and building dashboards and how you can you can do that in 90 minutes and get really familiar with SciSense. This is free, free to attend. Anybody who wants to be interested, come along. Um, anyone that's here on the webinar today, we will be emailing you links to register for those so that you can actually uh, pick them up. Uh, and I think Connor, that's me. I'm probably slightly overrunning, maybe a minute or two overrunning. Um, I'm not sure if we have time for Q and A, uh, but um, yeah, I think we 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 we'll 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 look to wrap up. Uh, unless you've anything to add, Connor, or nothing bad. No, that was excellent. Um, and I think just obviously the the key being the speed to insight um, everywhere, and just no, that was excellent. Um, so yeah, I don't think there's any questions as yet. I think that's how clear you are, clear and concise you are. Um, yeah, no, no, no questions there, but it, yeah, it certainly made it look uh, very easy to use for sure. Right. Okay, and yeah, so anybody there, there it is a good few people on the call. If you're interested in the um, in the accelerators, we'll send you links afterwards to come along, please. And um, uh, also then, um, yeah, we have our next webinar coming up as well. So thank everybody for joining us this morning. Uh, thanks, Connor and Tanya for organizing getting everything together um yeah and sure listen guys have a nice day thanks for coming and we'll talk to you soon thanks girl. everyone Much take care bye-bye thanks bye-bye